Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Chili here. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Give this video a big thumbs up and watch that notification bell so you will never miss another video from me. And today is my first story time on this channel. And I am going to be telling you guys what it's like for me to live with IBS and a gluten intolerance. This is a both like frustrating and rewarding kind of video because it's both rewarding and frustrating having IBS and gluten intolerance. So I'm going to start off with why it's rewarding. Start with the good before the bad. So the rewarding part is one, it's definitely helped me cut out a lot of fast food and it's also helped me cut out a lot of like the sugary drinks and unhealthy things for me. Because when I eat something like that, I get sharp abdominal pains, or I feel nauseous, I have to go lay down, or I get halfway through my meal and I don't even want to finish it. I don't want to finish anymore because it's just making me feel so sick, like I don't want to eat it anymore. Not to mention, I know there's going to be a nasty aftermath with me eating just a greasy cheeseburger. It's just not going to be cool. But my alternative is to make a turkey burger here at the house with gluten-free buns. With the, you know, gluten intolerance, the rewarding thing for that is, you know, it, it's helping me control like my sweets and my like, I really feel like, oh, hey, I'll just grab a donut or, hey, I'll just I'll grab this like six pats of croissants or something, I'll just sit there and eat it. Well, since going gluten-free, not only have I been cutting out, you know, the fast food and the junk food, but I've been watching everything that I eat because I noticed if I eat too much, then I bloat, I feel sick, I have to go lay down, and I sometimes get a headache. But with having IBS and the gluten intolerance, my eating habits have changed. I am cutting out caffeine. And I actually feel more energized as long as I get at least seven hours of sleep. Like I feel more energized. I don't have to take naps and that is huge. I am so thankful because when I was eating gluten and when I was, you know, struggling to figure out what to eat, like I had to take naps every day and my naps lasted five to six hours. And that was precious time that was wasted because I had to sleep because I, I legitimately could not keep myself awake. I couldn't do it. There are certain things that, you know, only I understand, like no one else in my family really goes through the gluten thing but the IBS there is at least one family member that goes through it and you know they understand that you know if I were to go eat some barbecue chicken wings that my stomach's gonna be burning up a storm and I'll have acid reflux like there are so few people in my family that actually understand what's going on but for me what I understand is I can look at a food and I'll be like okay I'm either going to have gas, bloat, or I'm going to be stuck in the restroom for at least half an hour. And then there's also the times where I'm like, okay, you know, I can eat this in proportion and then I can come back and eat the rest as long as, you know, I don't sit and eat it all in one sitting because I've noticed if I eat too much in one sitting, I will bloat. There's nothing I can do to stop it. And for me, that's really hard because I do have a big appetite and I have a fast metabolism. So trying to get everything together was difficult at first. Getting the ball rolling is what's hard about it for me. I'm still learning about the whole gluten intolerance. Like, you know, I, yes, there's obvious things like switching your bread, finding stuff that specifically says gluten free. But then there's stuff that's like, well, does it have gluten or does it not? And I have a prime example. So there's these chips that I really like and it's Takis. I'm sure everyone knows what they are by now, especially in Texas. But Takis, yes, they're made out of corn chips. But there is a big debate on whether it's safe for people that have a gluten intolerance because of the factories they're made in with, you know, chicharrones, choritos, um, you know, there's places that make the flowers and everything for sopapillas and 
quesadillas and all this stuff. So it's really hard to differentiate what I can eat versus what I can't sometimes. There's certain things, like I said, that you will not be able to figure out. One more really, I guess, rewarding thing is, okay, I have to kind of like backtrack to say this rewarding thing because I was in a phase where I would literally, I would sleep all day. I had no joy in anything. All I ate was fast food, junk food. I just sat and I binge ate everything that I saw. I was super emotional. I was depressed because my dog passed away. And I found out about IBS and everything like that my junior year. So it was before that, but you know, the symptoms had stopped. But when I got depressed and I started eating all this stuff again, it basically triggered my IBS to come back. So, you know, there might have been a slight chance that it wouldn't have come back if I wouldn't have eaten all that junk food and the greasy food, fast food, all the sodas and sugary drinks and my diabetes Starbucks. Let me tell you guys, I used to put like everything on there. Everything like extra mocha sauce, extra caramel sauce, extra whipped cream, extra toppings, extra this, extra that. Like my drinks looked so crazy. Like my mom actually would come to me and be like, what in the world is in your cup? But once again, I've gotten better <laughs> and it's it was hard. So when I was depressed and everything, I started gaining weight. It wasn't drastic, but I noticed it. And, you know, my siblings were like, oh my gosh, what happened to you? Because I used to dance all the time, do fitness. Um, I would take the dots for Watts and all that stuff. And I just cut it out like cold turkey, just quit it. I stopped it all. And I'm still trying to get back into it. But... Thanks to my car kickboxing class in college and my food choices, I've started to lose weight and, you know, I feel good about it. And I can tell, you know, that my abdominals are becoming stronger and my arms are stronger again. So between the gluten intolerance and IBS, I've definitely made some major life improvements and I've improved my way of living, even though everyone else in my house kind of has their own ordeal. I'm changing because I have to, like there's some nights they don't know what they want to eat for dinner. And I'm like, okay, well I'm gonna make this because I need to eat. I need to find something that's not going to upset my stomach, give me gas, make me bloated, um, and make me feel sick. So like tonight I am making a gluten-free pasta, you know, just gluten-free noodles turkey that's going to be ground up, and tomato sauce with all gluten-free seasonings. If you did know, you should check that. You really should because there are some seasonings that say may contain traces of wheat, and then there's ones that say gluten-free, and then there's ones that say nothing, which are the tricky ones because you really want to make sure that there's no cross-contamination there. And it's, it's, it's just honestly started taking over, you know, my life since it really should. And some people think I'm crazy. You know, I I was just at um, my mother's friend's house and she made separate meals for me. Like it's the same meal, but you know, she makes the non-gluten-free stuff for everyone else or like the really meat everyone else can eat. And that for me, she will actually go through and take the time to make, you know, my stuff out of turkey or chicken and, you know, let me bring some gluten-free buns or anything like that. And, you know, allow me to make loot for stuff at our house. Guaranteed. I still, you know, get questions sometimes like, why are you doing gluten free? Oh, it's legitimate? Okay. Because some people think I do it for fun. Now, let me tell you guys, when I heard that I might either be gluten intolerant or I had celiac disease, I was terrified. Well, like mortified because I was like, oh my gosh, I won't be able to eat anything. But I was thinking about the junk food. Like there is a whole whole world of healthy food that I can eat. It's crazy. I didn't eat so much. So now the most rewarding thing is that because I have to watch for stuff because of my IBS and gluten intolerance is like all this junk food can go bye bye. Bye. Don't need you anymore. All this delicious healthy food that makes me feel good 
come on in. I can bring in all the healthy food and be like, yeah, I have to take the healthy stuff over the junk food because if I don't, my wrath is probably going to hit and it's not going to be very fun. And I actually get really, really, really cranky, like really irritable when I end up ingesting gluten. It's it's crazy because I'll be fine, you know, I'll ha ha ha, you know, it's all cool, it's all great. Once I eat gluten, I swear it's like the monster that doesn't have Snickers takes over. Like I'm actually really nasty. And I'm not ashamed to say that because I have noticed it myself where I'll be all, you know, happy and jolly and then the next moment I'll know that I ate loon because I'm acting like I'm on my first like 24 hours of my cycle. It's probably a little TMI but I mean all girls know that the first 24 hours are kind of the worst and you're like the most cranky there you just kind of want to like break stuff <laughs> and that's what Lewin does to me. I get really upset. Overall, like, I'm actually kind of thankful and thankful, like, thankful and not thankful at the same time for being gluten intolerant and have IBS because, yes, you know, there's stuff that I can't go just, you know, grab out of convenience or I have to, you know, bake it from scratch. But, but most of all, I am thankful for being, you know, gluten intolerant and have IBS because it's starting to change my life, make me feel better more awake and not to mention my skin is clearing up and thanking me my body is thanking me like I wake up in the morning and I don't feel sick it's amazing because for the longest time I have woken up in the morning and I'm just like do I have to do this today do I have to get out of bed like do I want to go to class do I want to do this nah I'll just stay in bed but now I'm like whoop Let's get up, let's do stuff, let's get this day started. And that energy is so amazing. Like, I don't think you guys will understand until, you know, if you make the change or you start changing your life, you will get that energy back that you probably had like four or five years ago. You know, just bring it back in, change a little bit in your life, and I swear, it is going to just change your life, change the way you feel. I feel so much better. Like, if you guys look in my very, very first videos on this channel, like, to me, I watched them and I was like, looking back on this, I kind of look sluggish and my skin doesn't look all that, you know, radiant or all that. And I was wearing makeup too and it just kind of all looked dull. It And I didn't feel like I had the most energetic feeling except for my DIY ring light video, but I think... Before that, I had coffee, so that one doesn't count. But yeah, that is the end of today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Give this video a big thumbs up and wet that notification bell so you will never miss another video. And don't forget to leave me any questions down in the comments bar below about anything about me, my channel, videos, video requests, anything of the sorts. And that will be for my future Q&A and if you have any questions about anything I said in this video or if you're going through the change or gluten intolerance, celiac, non-celiac, coeliac disease or IBS, anything, you guys can contact me on any of my social media. My email address is on my channel in like my overview about section. So you guys can contact me with your questions and I will try to help you. And if there's something that I can't answer, I will tell you guys, you know, maybe that's something you need to go talk to a nutritionist or a doctor about. But once again, I can share my experience with you guys and try to help you guys as much as possible. So without further ado, I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.